Welcome back, Gap Streeters. It's Gap Street. We're back doing to this again. Discussion this is... Drive. This... <laughs> it's another episode. We're on episode 11. 11. Weeks. Still in double digits. 11, yeah. Uh, that's we haven't weird. given up yet. We have not given up. We're still there. We've been doing this since February 6th. 6th, apparently, because that's when it first went up on YouTube. Yeah. It was episode 1. I, we had to upload them manually rather than just let just pay <laughs> Podbean fourteen bucks a month and just like here you take care of our shit and we'll give you money and they were like all right sounds good. Speaking of paying Podbean, you have a message for? I do have a message. We are getting paid by our awesome sponsor, the Green Room. I've mentioned Green Room several times on the podcast and they are not quite open yet. They will be at the end of the year though. We are just uh, getting the name out there. They'll be, uh, they will have products from t-shirts to tobacco products, and they should be open by the end of 2019 at the latest. Uh, if any of this sounds interesting to you, make sure to tune into the podcast where we'll be talking more about them uh, in future episodes and where you can find one of these shops and where you can get in touch with them and other stuff. Yeah. So. And we also have one other exciting announcement. We have officially been entered into the polls for the Columbus Podcast Awards, the first annual Columbus first Podcast time. Awards. This is the first year that they have been doing it. You think we'll win? Uh, no. No? <laughs> I'm, I'm not confident about that yet, mostly because uh, we're going up against things like uh, the Confluence cast, um, things like uh, C-Buzz, um, Columbus Music, you know, specific... You don't have enough... You gotta have more faith in us, Corey. We, we've, we've been doing it. this for a while. But, we Gage, got, we, we got only have chops. two and a half months of clout. Come on. <laughs> That's it. We can't... We can't beat those giants You yet. gotta keep yet. your head up, though. The key word is yes. Y- is yet. yet. Also yes. But yet. Yes. 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 <laughs> so we will eventually, hopefully, with the support of our amazing supporters, do the thing and uh, get... The whatever trophy they have, I have no idea what we win. I don't if we even do win. I'm not even I, I honestly, quite sure what we're in. It, I I can just I'm I'm cool with just saying we were in it honestly. And there is like a a mingling session beforehand yeah. where we will be like, hey, we're all podcasters. So uh, <clears throat> I know we're we're excited to meet uh, Revolter Pictures. We've been talking to them recently. Uh, you guys should check out their stuff. Uh, they they did a a rather absurdist. A yeah. skit recently called if, uh, Jimbus Cable. If you guys have ever <laughs> watched any of the old Outage Couch content, you guys are definitely like their stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty wild. They're pretty funny guys. So uh, hopefully at some point in the future we can work with them. So uh, go check out their stuff. So I think it's a. Uh, it's about time to it's, introduce it's about our time. guests. If you read the title of today's episode, uh, this is clearly we have not outlined what this is what this is yet. We actually do have a guest here today. Her name is Susan Kim. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> Susan Kim is a photographer at our high school currently. Uh, what year are you in? Uh, 2020. So I'm a junior. Junior. Okay, cool. Wow. So uh, we've been uh, checking out the Instagram account of uh, Images by Susan, if you guys want to find it online. Uh, and these shots are, I would consider them, from from the lay person's eye, I guess, uh very professional looking. Uh, they are uh, the effects are very well done, and uh, the fact that that kind of talent comes from our high school uh, is very exciting to me. And I think uh, a lot more people. I, it is already pretty popular, uh, but I think even more people uh, around Columbus should hear about this uh, because honestly, like other photographers that I've seen that do similar things or just do senior photos or something like that. Uh, this, this is much higher caliber, uh, in my Thank opinion. You. So, uh, we are, uh, we're very, uh, we're, we're glad to have her on today. It'll be pretty cool. So, uh, th- thank you for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thank we, you for having me. Of course. We just wanted to know, where did you learn that? <laughs> like, where did you, where did you learn your, like, Honestly, photography skills? Like, how did, where did, what was it that you were kind of... So, it all started, like, two years ago. I came back from this sibling trip out in Korea, and then it was kind of my brother's senior year, too, and it was the summer of his senior year, and he was into film, and he... he did, didn't he do Crossroads? Yes. Yeah, that, that famous uh, short film. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. And people in the uh, in the Upper Arlington community will probably... 
know of this film. Yes. Yeah. Um, we discussed yeah. it on Jackson's yeah, episode we did. as well. We, yeah, Jackson Sloan. Um, it was okay. Yeah, so he, <laughs> he didn't have, like, a lot of... You know, space to take all of his equipment back, and right. I asked for his camera because at that time I like to do photo shoots with just like my friends, like with on the iPhone, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and so he was like, I don't, I don't even know what he said. He told me that I needed to like get straight A's or something to get like his camera or something. And then I'm like, okay. Wow, now you got Big Brother pushing you to right, get the good right. <laughs> So. So I got it eventually, and then I did my first shoot with my two like really good friends, Ariana Carpenter and Theron Dick. And like at that time, it was just kind of the cliche like friends, smiley mm -hmm. photo shoots. And then one of them I took at like a small convenience store, and the lighting was really cool. And then I decided to put it on Photoshop and actually like kind of play around with the photo. And then like I actually really liked doing that and spending my time with just editing and stuff and I like I was such a newbie with Photoshop because there's so much you can do. Mm -hmm. And um, I just looked up tutorials on YouTube and bought books on like you bought out. books from photography? Yeah. That's you way see, more than other people yeah, you do. You don't see a whole lot of people doing that anymore. <laughs> well, Good I, you. I just, like, I don't know. I was just curious, honestly. Like, right. My curiosity was, like, at its peak. Yeah. Um. Obviously, because it, it was the beginning of everything. And then I started to post stuff, and I met, like, people that I don't really usually talk to. And then I was like, oh, let's do a shoot together. So that was a really fun way to kind of hang out with people and get to know other people as well and um so yeah just all my peers were like oh can I do a shoot like I really want to do like this and that and then I'm like wait like I also have a schedule like how do I how do I organize <laughs> right. all of it and then um my dad was like oh you should start like charging them so like people kind of back off you know I was about to ask if you do yeah. yeah and then I'm like oh wait like I don't know like I'm still in high school I'm still really new at this and then he was like oh, like that's just you know it's like, how it starts whatever. really yeah, yeah I mean exactly. if people are coming up to you because you have something that you can supply them I mean why not right. you know, go ahead and start your own little business out of it right so then I started that and yeah, I feel like more people kind of approached me because they didn't have to know me in mm. order to, sh like, shoot with me. So that's just how it started in a nutshell. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, how much editing goes into these photos? Okay, so typically... Um, like, they, I don't know, they pick, like, 10 to 15 photos, and that normally takes me out of, like, I don't know, 200. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it takes, like, 30 minutes just to, like, choose, and, like, normally, there are, like, girls that are, that shoot with me often, hmm. and they're, like, indecisive, and I'm like, well, yeah, I don't know, and then they're like, this or that, and I'm like, I don't know, because, <laughs> like, all of, like, all of them... I, I really like and I don't know but normally yeah the average is about 10 to 15 that they pick and um, that's about like I charge like two to three dollars per picture so oh, I don't really do bad. it but yeah cool. so um, it just depends on what we're doing like the props that we're using makeup and stuff right um, but that takes me okay normally it takes me about four hours just in total because like not for, not for each photo but no for, no it's just okay. for total like yeah. four to six hours and um first i just put it through photoshop and i normally i do portraiture so it's normally about you know the person obviously and uh i retouch on photoshop and that just takes so long because i like have to color correct the skin and like everything and then uh, and then I start like editing the actual picture mm -hmm. and the lighting and stuff and then um, so normally if you guys are familiar with like visco or something yeah you, you like already have the filters like already and then 
you can just adjust whatever you want it yeah, okay. to be, but I like make my own filters, I guess. Um, and that takes like another, you know. You need to work for Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, <know. laughs> yeah no, I, I understand the process because I do a lot of like color grading for my film right. stuff that mm -hmm. I do where I will go in and actually like, you know, push the highlights to this color mm -hmm. and the shadows to this color yeah. and then you got to find some kind of neutral and make sure that those skin tones are right. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I shoot with manual and not automatic, mm -hmm. so I, I have to like adjust the exposure and stuff. Right. And at first, I had no idea like <laughs> what I was supposed to do. And I like I saw an article was like, if you're a real photographer, you have to shoot on manual, <laughs> like automatic. Then you're like, I don't know, not controlling. I don't know. But then I was like, <laughs> oh shoot, I gotta I gotta start shooting in manual now. And then I started like. Um, watching this girl Jessica Cobasi and she's like this like really cool uh photographer that's like I don't know where she lives but like she's really good mm -hmm. and um she was like talking about manual and stuff and I that's when like I was I did my first senior picture <laughs> Nice. And I actually met her at a concert I was in like we were both waiting in line and like we exchanged like each other's Instagram and uh, she DM'd me and she was like, hey, you're like a photographer. Um, I want to like, I want to ask you to do my senior pictures. And I was like, uh, like, do I say yes? Do I say no? Because <laughs> like I was still kind of uh, insecure about like my skills and like, I don't know. Right. So, um, so then she was like, yeah. Uh, it's fine if you're new, and I'm like, okay, and then uh, we went to the Franklin Conservatory, mm -hmm. um, and that was indoors, and I, like, never really shoot indoors, and that's also, like, added to the pressure because, like, you, like, there wasn't enough light hitting it because it was uh, during the winter, yeah. so I was like, oh my gosh, and at that time, I still was using my brother's lens, and that's normally, like, a zoom-in lens and, like, for filmmaking, so it wasn't, yeah. like... A prime lens where it's catered towards photography, I guess. Right. So um, all that, like most sixty percent of the pictures came out blurry, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm just like not like that good enough to like you know take on this like career, I guess. And um, like most of them actually turned out okay, like the forty percent. <laughs> and that's what she took <laughs> and um yeah so that was like the first challenging shoot that i had so what equipment do you use what kind of camera lenses do you go off of typically? um for my first camera body that i used was my brother's which was a 70 D. 70D? Canon, yeah. Nice. And then, um, I really don't know what lens he used, but it was, yeah. It was just like a zoom in lens, like one of those basic. Like, gotcha. I think he bought like a kit or something and it came with it. Um, but my actual uh, photography camera that I have right now is an 80D camera uh, body with, uh, with the. Oh my gosh, I'm blank uh, with a 50 millimeter 1.2. Yeah, I know a lot of yeah. people typically go with the 50 mil. They call it like the nifty 50 lens. Mm -hmm, it's typically mm -hmm. what they yeah. refer to it as because it's just like a lens that you can, whether you're doing photography film, it's just kind of a good lens in general to use because it gives you like yeah. a nice depth of field if you're trying to do photography stuff and it's yeah, shoots it's wide enough. Especially for so. like portraiture, right. it's like a nice blur in the background. Yeah. Too, so it's really nice. Yeah. I am completely uh, alien to this. Yeah, Corey's the Corey's the audio guy. I am the more visual guy. He knows okay, music. Gotcha. I know film. Yeah. So that's why I like. See, I, I try to make sure the podcast is the right color usually, <laughs> um, but I don't. <laughs> I uh, currently it's blue on the waves. I'm so uh, that's that's all I know. Uh, I, I've I've taken I've taken pictures before, uh, <laughs> but uh, I can't say I've done anything professionally. That's really cool. And it's cool to hear about. I, d I think it's interesting how a lot of people can, like, go into, like, photography. It's a lot easier for people to get into photography oh, because yeah. we have smartphones. Like, I uh, have a photography account myself, 
and but like half of them I shoot and edit on my iPhone. Oh yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's just I can take the picture and then I have like several different editing apps that I use. Yeah, that it's I, just and you so can just convenient. upload from there. It's just yeah. Compared, to, you no longer have to go out and buy a, like a camera that's a couple hundred dollars when you already have like something in your pocket that can shoot something at least at least close to what a camera can do. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's like one time I was hanging out with my mom and like this. I don't know, it was early in the morning and like the window like casted a really cool light on this flower and then I was like, oh my gosh, I have to like take it because it's just a really cool shot. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm not about to like go upstairs and grab my camera and like, it's just, yeah, it's just more convenient to have Mm -hmm. a phone. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, Do you tend to make a, like a full career out of this or? Honestly, like I thought about it and then I don't know. I'm also really interested in the aspect of business and marketing and kind of advertisement and stuff like that. So I would do it as like a side job, like maybe in the future, Mm -hmm. but not as like a whole career because like there's so many uh, like great photographers out there. I think it'll be hard to like stand out or anything. Well, like in the in like business and marketing and advertising, a lot of you know photo photography and editing is involved. So that's all a good way for you to you know like get your skills into Mm -hmm. what you're what you're interested yeah. in. Uh, have you ever done or uh, plan on doing any concert photography or anything like that? That's what all, like, all of my friends are asking me to do. Yeah. <laughs> because they're all like, oh, Breakaway's coming up. Like, you should DM them, like, ask if you can get free tickets in and just like take pictures. I'm like, oh yeah, that's like, that's a cool idea. But this summer, like, I'm kind of busy with everything like yeah. so I don't think I'll do that and plus I don't know like that's so also like out of my comfort zone I mm-hmm. don't know I would rather do something I I first started out with like portraiture basic kind of trendy looking portraiture but then yeah. I also kind of now I'm leaning towards cinematography if that makes sense like huh. it's kind of like storytelling within a picture and more in depth Mm-hmm. of what a picture yeah. says. I noticed recently on your Instagram account that it was it was less portraiture and more mm-hmm. of other scenes. I don't remember yeah. any specifically, but uh, it, that's what you're moving toward more. Uh, yeah, like the, the thing that influenced that most was because I'm studying for the ACT Ooh, and that's nice. taking up a lot of time. So um, a lot of people kind of asked me if they can schedule and I was like yeah like during the summer so during the winter and spring <laughs> right, like I was right, yeah. more focused on my high school career than my photography cool the infinite reps and we are part of the vibes in the literal sense said Marty McFly and the emperor chess the Lorian started to fly uh is there a type of photo that you have not done yet and you would really like to Oh, I think Flash is really cool. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to experiment with Flash, but I just don't have the equipment that requires. And, like, I don't know. I don't really know what I would shoot. I just don't know a like lot about Flash. the weird umbrella-looking thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Like, almost studio, but I also kind of want to do direct Flash, if that makes sense. So there's, mm. like, soft light kind of fluorescent more of what you would see in like kind of like magazines or uh like movie posters or something but i don't know i think direct flash also kind of captures that cinematic mood also so when people come up to you and say hey i want to do a photo and you say yes is there like a certain you know process that you have to go through or is it kind of just like all right let me grab my camera bag and we'll head over to the mall mm. or whatever Venmo, cough up. No, <laughs> um normally i i would ask them like what they would like to shoot i guess and most of them are honestly more of like to post on their instagram so um i don't know it's it varies like I, I also kind of want to do, like, the creative side, but mm-hmm. most of my clientele, like, don't really want, like, to, like, I don't know, stuff paper on their, like, nose or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> or, like, do crazy makeup, which, understandable. So, um, mostly I just take them downtown because, like, 
what really can you do in Columbus? You right. know, like, it's just the short north, downtown, and, like, the German village. Those are, like, my go-to spots where I usually go with, like, a lot of buildings and scenery. Nice. Um, so out of mile would be a good spot, too, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so how much would you say is, like, your clientele's, like, input on what they want versus what you think looks good? Like, what percentage, I guess, would you say is, like, your ideas versus their ideas? Um, so, for example, if one of them wants to shoot, obviously, like, portraiture down Mm -hmm. in the short north, and we start shooting, and I normally, like, uh, I look at a lot of, like, this sounds weird, but, like, poses for, like, models and Mm -hmm. stuff on Instagram and, like, like, on websites and stuff, and, um, I, like, tell them what to do, and sometimes they, like are like doubtful and they're like are you sure like this looks good and like most of them are like kind of second guessing like themselves and I'm like no you're good and I don't know like that's one of the aspects that like I don't really like because I feel like so with social media the, these supermodels a lot of the girls like follow them and stuff because they're popular like Kendall Jenner or something and like they see these picture perfect you know pictures and they want to kind of get I, I, I don't know like I'm kind of rambling right now but like they, they have like that standard they think they should look right, up to yeah. right yeah. right and I think that's just so messed up and yeah nothing's like that like what they have is like five people doing their hair and makeup and like five other people adjusting their lights you know and it's like a whole production and I don't think a lot of the girls like should look up to that at all so anyway back to your question (laughs) um um, so yeah i like wait sorry what was your question so how much of a how much of a like percentage wise how much of it of the shoot is your ideas versus their ideas oh um as for like what mm -hmm. they want the photo to consist of and what you what you think would look good honestly like 80-20, 80-20, most of my clients, like, trust me. Gotcha. My, because they already know, like, from my portfolio, which is right. like, yeah. Instagram. Yeah. So they, like, trust me on what, on my judgment, so. Do you ever mess with people and just be like, okay, now put your foot in your mouth. Like, this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I keep it very professional. <laughs> yeah, that's totally what I would do, and I should not be a photographer. Um. <laughs> oh, wait, one time. Um, I, had to... <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> well, like, okay, this wasn't on purpose, but I was just... So I saw this photo on Pinterest or something, and it was the studio light... Um, kind of setting with this girl and she had this cool like makeup on she <laughs> she had like red eyelashes basically mm-hmm. so I'm like oh my god that's so cool and um I think her makeup was based off of like a peacock or something it was very colorful <laughs> and I'm like oh my god that's so cool and pretty so like a while back I think last spring I had a client and we went to the park and she thought that it was like this ordinary, you know, shoe and I kind of wanted to like, I kind of wanted to invoke this idea and say, hey, like I saw this picture, would you be down like towards the end of the shoe? And she was like, yeah, sure. And I had red lipstick and I put it on her like eyelashes. But hmm. the thing was, she was like brunette and it didn't like show oh. through. Uh, yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like what do I do? Cause like, I don't know, I really wanted to make this work. And so I started to like put red like on top of her eye. If that makes sense, like, into, like, a rectangle shape. And I wanted to be, like, creative and abstract. And it worked. I don't know. So she she was, like, really unsure. She was... Right, She kind of wanted to, yeah, kind of run away (laughs) when I was applying (laughs) that. I... I think that's where the best uh, content comes from. It's that that experimentation, Mm -hmm. you know? And normally, all the good shots are from, like, last minute shoots Mm -hmm. and especially if we're on like a time crunch or something i'm like freaking out and under pressure that's when everything like kind of falls into play i feel like that's a that's the case with a lot of creators in general whether it's photography or video work it's that it's that thing that you were just kind of like 
let's just do this just for the mm-hmm. sake like it's not yeah. really planned out it's the ones that those are the ones that become really popular yeah. those are the ones that go viral yeah, which exactly. I always I thought was interesting because um, even like I have like some video that I made a few years ago like some Xbox tutorial and that has like 3,000 views and I oh put, my gosh yeah I put that together in like five minutes and I was like this is <laughs> complete garbage you guys should be looking at this that I actually yeah, spent exactly. a lot of time and money into <laughs> So but the moral of the story is rush everything <laughs> and don't plan anything. Don't plan. Just yeah. yeah. Improvise. So yeah. That's bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> well look at Muscle Milk Mike. How much time yeah. went into that, huh? A lot, <laughs> a lot of time went into that. Never mind. Let my mind run me wild a couple years. I can't feel the same. I'm different day. Do you so you mentioned how uh, what the photographer Jessica Kilby Kilby yeah, yeah so do you draw do you have any other photographers or pe- people that work in like camera work that you draw inspiration from Um none of like I don't know I don't really look into the classic photographers I guess the older ones mm-hmm. Um I don't know why I've never like really thought about checking out their work but um most of my inspiration comes from colors i don't know uh so one time i was driving to get food with my friends <laughs> and this is so funny <laughs> for me i don't know um so <laughs> so we were driving and my friend ava was like next i don't know next to like this building and it had like really cool color blocks and i was like oh my god that's so cool and i was like freaking out about it because that's where like my inspiration comes from because mm-hmm. like from lighting different lightings and like um because that makes me think about stuff i don't know and um so then my other friend was like kind of mocking me and was like oh my god colors like that's so cool (laughs) and it was so funny like i didn't realize how like obnoxious i was being (laughs) no so funny um but yeah like to be honest just like i don't know lighting scenery and kind of culture also influences Mm -hmm. my work um so i i go on a lot of like trips with my family and i always like to capture the moments and the stuff and um i i would like to do more scenery but again like living in columbus what like really can you do a lot with like scenery um i so that's why i try to experiment with photoshop and if you haven't checked out my recent posts um i took a i took a shot of a building and um i kind of made like a cool um I don't know how to explain it, but I made my own colors on Photoshop and kind of took the win- some of the windows out and like added I don't know eyes or something. Oh. Yeah. So that I'm was look just at that like right now. <laughs> just like an experimental thing that I did. Um but f- for Instagram like my scenery pictures and non-portraiture pictures they're like they're not as popular, maybe because my audience is more of like my peers and they want right, to see right. each other yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that, which like I understand, but yeah, I would like to do more of the creative side of photography. Do you have like a like folder of shots that you've gotten that you really like but have never really shared or are you kind of just like oh i always just always put just it up put on it up. my instagram yeah. yeah i'm like okay whatever like this gets two likes i don't really care <laughs> right because i know there's, there's a lot of people out there that's just like you know i want to kind of i want to keep this piece of work to myself mm. just because you know it's yeah. very personal to them so i don't know if that was that's more of just like um, I take a lot of pictures of my mom, and that's like more of that, I guess. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, uh, you said you got books for this. <laughs> yeah. I want to go back to that. Uh, that was my, uh, the phase that I had with, uh, getting to know manual 
and exposure because okay. all these words just it was so foreign to me. I was like, what's exposure? What's f-stop? I don't know. I yeah. was so confused about what these YouTube videos were talking about because half of the things they were saying, like I didn't understand yeah. um, or relate to. So um, I think it was my brother who told me, my other brother, I have two brothers, gotcha. and uh, he was like, you should start checking out books or something and i'm like really like <laughs> i can get all my stuff on the internet and i, mean, and I then... can't really blame you when i got into web design i bought a book from my work about it and mm -hmm. i have i have yet to touch it because i just i've not gotten around to it but yeah so uh i i purchased two books one on exposure and one on this photographer who shoots mainly black and white and he mm -hmm. travels the world and he like talks about how there's more to just a photo and he talks about like again storytelling and stuff and um i'm like halfway and i got it like two years ago and then my exposure book like two pages in so apparently yeah. it was enough <laughs> <laughs> that's cool Mo yeah most of my like learning was from youtube and articles and stuff cool yeah, forget school. We just need the internet. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, let's go to let's go to online college. For there you go. Master class. Yes. Skillshare. <laughs> Sponsor us, please. Um, but you also said that culture influences your photos. Corey and loves his culture. I, I, I'm a very cultured man. I like to go places. <laughs> but that I heard that word and I was like, oh, dang, <laughs> top it. So right. I, I really want to hear more about that. So. Uh, um, my family's from South Korea, and I travel there, and honestly, like, when I say culture, like, again, I, I haven't really started up my photography when I was traveling the most, mm -hmm. so, um, I don't know, I really want to bring in more diversity into my photos, as in just the scenery, people, mm -hmm. and again, kind of like, Again, storytelling. Like, I just want to take some candid photos, I guess, of what... So, if I go to Korea again, then, like, I just want to take photos of what I normally see mm -hmm. okay. and share it to my audience and tell them that, you know, there's cool stuff in Korea. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. my capstone this year, a lot of the research I did was based on how best to teach culture uh, mm -hmm. in an educational environment yeah. and other than actually bringing members of another culture into a classroom or something like that uh, the best the next best option was images and, and photos That's and awesome. videos and such so uh, I think that'd be really cool what you're doing is uh, you know bringing I guess bringing South Korea right. here right. in the form of those images yeah. and especially with the skill that you brought on to your uh, your portraiture shots and, and stuff like that here uh, mm -hmm. I would be very excited to see that That'd be cool. yeah one time uh, I went with my brothers on this college tour or actually no he was in college and I was with my parents in LA and it was during my spring break and I wanted to do like street photography I guess and it, nonchalantly like taking pictures of people but like i was so scared because like one guy was just directly looking at the lens and i'm like oh my god like he's gonna say something but then he didn't so i was like wait well this is kind of cool because um i've seen people doing street photography and kind of just like walking while shooting i guess and i was like is that even loud because it's like <laughs> invading their yeah, privacy some, some people are very weird about that kind of thing yeah. especially in bigger cities like la and new york where if you're mm -hmm. going around taking photos or filming something photos photos <laughs> photos uh <laughs> but it, they'll go around like uh filmmakers photographers will go around and take pictures and they'll get like uh, someone's shop in the background mm -hmm. and the shop owner will be like hey you can't have my shot in there unless you like you know shoot some uh, revenue my way but it's very different in like in cities like Columbus and other like I don't want to say smaller cities because I don't think Columbus I mean it's like you know like I think you know what I mean just like yeah, right. yeah, cities not nearly as big as LA and, and New York but like a lot of times you're just, just like yeah just you know throw me like if it's a mm -hmm. film just like you know throw me in the credits that's cool mm -hmm. whatever yeah. um
Yeah. You said uh, shoot some revenue my way. I I, I kind of want to bring up the the topic of being paid in exposure. <laughs> let, let, yeah. Let's talk about that. How how do you feel about? It, it, let's say somebody were to be like, hey, so. I'm cool and a lot of people know about me, so if you take photos of me and I say credit to, you know, uh -huh. like, Susan yeah. Kim did this, uh, so I'm paying you in, in exposure, how would you, like, how would you take that, what would your attitude be about that? Because I know a lot of people would be like, mm, no, you yeah. can't do that. I mean, I don't know, like, I haven't really thought about it, <laughs> to yeah. be honest, so you're just putting me on the spot. Um, we ask the real questions. Yes. Here on the <laughs> we grill you. <laughs> um. So I'm a I'm a very like, I don't know, I don't I'm, I don't get worked up on a lot of things on a lot of like small things. So Me neither. I'd be like, yeah. if they're saying, I don't know. I'd be like, okay, <laughs> honestly, I'd be like, okay, hey, whatever you want to do. Like, if if they were paying me. Like, if they were my client, and they said, oh, yeah, like, kind of cocky, and was like, yeah, like, I'll credit you, whatever. Wait, I don't I don't really understand your question. Okay, so, so let's <laughs> say, uh, what's, who's somebody just, like, kind of famous? If Kanye West. Okay. <laughs> kind of. Okay. If, <laughs> if Kanye West was to be like, hey. Old Kanye or new Kanye? That's <laughs> this is important. We're not going back to this joke. Um. <laughs> If if Kanye West were to be like, hey, I'd love for you to take some photograph, like some take some photos of photos. me, <laughs> photos of me. Oh, so instead of them paying me, they would just, just they would just credit your photo. They would just credit you. Oh. And then like maybe shout you out in a song or something like that. Oh, I don't and, like if they would just be like you know photo taken by Susan, like you weren't directly getting you know paid or anything. Would you still do it? I mean, yeah, why not? Like it's Kanye West. <laughs> And it's like the experiment. I don't know. Like I. Understand. What if it was somebody that only had like, uh, a few. like a, yeah. like maybe like, ten thousand followers on Instagram or like under that, like. I'd say, yes. However, I wouldn't put my all into it. I guess like I I would no, okay. no I would I would ha but I wouldn't give them like a lot of the photos. So like say. It's all They're decided like, by you. Right, right, right. Like you so have to do shots would, for them. Right, right. That's fine. I, I, would, I would tell them what I would want to shoot, and then if they don't like it, then they don't have to post it. But I would just give them, I don't know, two or three photos and say, right. here's your little teaser. If you want to work with me more, then pay me next time. There you go. Kind of like that. So microtransactions <laughs> in photography, no. Uh, and just be like, okay, I'm gonna take your photos, but since you're not paying me, I own you now. So you are just <laughs> part of my portfolio. Is that cool? <laughs> hey, on each shot, I'm sure there's some sort. Is is there like a clean cut? process that you go through that's kind of similar for each shoot or is it kind of just for retouching yes okay because it's just so what i do is i so imagine just a picture of your face okay okay and what i would do is take that into photoshop and split the frequencies, I guess. So there's a low frequency and a high frequency. Mm -hmm. And the low frequency, okay, so there's <laughs> three layers. Your original photo, there's a low, and then there's a high. You do all this editing, like, like a little thing, and then you turn off the high frequency. That will make your overall image blurry. And that's when I do the skin retouching. And then you turn on okay. the high frequency, which is just the skin texture. Okay. That like keeps. So it's kind of like low res to high res. Right, just, basically. Okay. But then the high res is just your skin texture. So if I didn't do any of the splitting frequencies, then your skin will look blurry in order to look retouched. Okay. And that's what I used to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which is terrible. Like so, say you. I get it though. Yeah, like yeah, if, if that's you have, part of it. 
Yeah, if you have like yeah. a pimple, then like, and you want me to take that out, then what I would used to do was just kind of blur it out, which would make the skin look patchy and not mm -hmm. good. Yeah. But then I learned about frequencies, and I was like, oh my god, I gotta jump on that board, and it changed my whole retouching game. So it was just like a trade secret, like people yeah. are. <laughs> I it mean, also, honestly, yeah. search it on YouTube. Like, that's literally, like, how I learned, like, most of my stuff. Yeah. I know there's, like, some photo editing applications for, like, they have, like, things specifically for, like, uh, removing blemishes or something. Mm -hmm. But they'll just take... It's very, it's similar to, uh, like, content-aware um, filling in, like, After Effects where, like, you take something that's in and it'll just, like use uh information from other parts to fill it in so that right, way it removes right. it from the shot mm -hmm. i think like but when you're doing it and like i use uh afterlight 2 for a lot of photo editing mm -hmm. and it has a feature like that yeah but it'll take information from a random part of the image and kind of fill it in so uh, sometimes so it's it, like patching yeah so you can a lot of times you can tell Sometimes it works really well. Sometimes it's just kind of like it takes something that's a completely different color yeah. and a completely different <laughs> yeah. part of the frame and puts it there. It's like that wasn't what I was going for at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like it's it's that it's manually going in and like retouching mm -hmm. it with a bunch of different settings as yeah. how you're going to get it to look the way you want. Right. Like Facetune is just the easy way. Right. To just blur out all the blemishes. And yeah. Yeah. That's the difference between free editing and. So do you, do you, um, I have an Adobe subscription through the school because mm -hmm. I'm in honor cinematic. Do you, are you in classes that where you yeah. get the same mm -hmm. thing? So yeah. like what kind of classes are you in? The thing is I bought Photoshop before Gotcha. Anything, okay. yeah. And I have like a home computer, so there you go. yeah, it doesn't um, influence me. But what was your question? Oh, sorry. So <laughs> do you, what? Um, so you're taking classes? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Are like are they like graphic design classes or um, other like are you photo photography? They're mostly photography. Um, so I started photo one, which is the basic introduction photography mm -hmm. um, sophomore year and then this year I'm in honors photography but the thing is I thought that I, I don't know I want to say that I'm not learning much but it's more of old film and chemicals yeah, and, film photography right right mm -hmm. which is really cool but I guess my interest isn't that it's more way. digital based yeah, yeah. Are you with Scott Winberg? Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have him this year. I'm in photo one because I've been taking mm -hmm. all these film classes. I was like, I guess I'll take photography. Yeah. Do you know he also has a podcast? No. No. Yeah, he, <gasps> yeah Scott Winberg. He, he, ha he has a, it's more, it's, it's, he call I think he calls it a podcast, but it's more of him just kind of like talking for a few minutes to an hour, like doing like voice tutorials. And like, if you <laughs> oh, go on. Yeah, like on YouTube. Yeah, he's like shown, a, like shown some of them in, in class where he'll like go through the process and if you go on apple podcast there's actually like video with the podcast so it's mainly just like okay. video tutorials that are on, on like that he like are listed it, as his podcast called, it isn't called talking of turnpike is it no it is not better it's not. uh <laughs> i think it's photography 101 with scott wittenberg but cool. it, like some of its stuff is really cool yeah um, i know he makes like books too yeah. yeah like he's like it's crazy how experienced he is yeah. in terms of like it's yeah he was showing me this um this I don't even know what it's called, but it's just like what you would shoot film back in the day, like back back in the day, mm -hmm. and it's like this huge like box, and he made it, yeah. and I'm like what? And he was like, yeah, I made it with some like like this tube to like actually press the shutter, and I'm like, and and it's just like homemade, and I thought that was so cool, and like the pictures he was um, showing me it, and it was just so crisp. And like it was so nice, and I was so surprised um, how he made that. I saw a video of these guys that uh, they took. You know, have you heard the expression like, "Oh, did you take that picture on a potato?" Or like, if you film that on a potato, like, because the image just looks like garbage. Oh, okay. It's like that's like an expression <laughs> that people use, where they actually hollowed out a potato 
and they put they 3D printed this little black enclosure so that light wouldn't hit the film. Yeah. And they would take the picture by loading the film into the like little hollowed out <laughs> potato and they had a lens attached to it with like oh the gosh. focus and the aperture set on the lens. And they would take the photo by removing the lens cap and then putting it back on. Oh. And that's and yeah, it was like and that's how you would get the exposure. Um, and then he would have to go back into a room that was pitch black, advance the film manually, close the potato back up, and then go take another photo. <laughs> were they good? They were pretty garbage, but okay. like for a po- for a photo that was literally taken using a potato, yeah, it, it was, was pretty impressive. <laughs> and like I was kind of inspired by that, and like I want to like awesome. do something similar to it at some point when I have the time because I have a three D printer. So, mm. so if you spent literally your last penny on a 3D printer and you already had a garden with potatoes in it, this is your only means of you taking could, photos. It's yes. possible. Right. It's, it's possible. possible. You have a 3D printer. Well, then you have to go get it developed. But then you, yeah. So. It's just like 10 bucks in McAllister's. <laughs> so. What, what, maybe you what? can make some money by selling your potato cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> I know there are, there are lemon batteries too. I like this oh, idea yeah, of just like yeah. making different things with just food videos of people that pour monster on a corn dog and charge a phone yeah i love those memes dude oh those are funny but do you so do you you mainly work in digital have you like experimented on your own with film photography at all no no (laughs) but i know that like uh polaroids and film is coming back into you know the trend because like all these influencers like Kendall Jenner because she's like really into photography t- mm-hmm. also and um, I saw this picture and like it was like all Polaroid and I don't know I think that Polaroid and film is coming back into the play I like the idea of Polaroid being that like just like capturing that moment and having it physically mm-hmm. in your hand yeah. um, that you can just like pin up on your mirror or your board or something it's like, I think isn't it, isn't it like you're not supposed to shake it or something when it comes out? Like that's what people do. When that's I heard what this, I thought, like, and then my dad was like, "No, that's what I used to do." And I'm like, "Oh, really?" I heard that I like isn't that, I think I heard that you were supposed to just let it air out and you weren't supposed to actually shake it. I don't know. I have never actually done extensive research on Polaroid photography, but <laughs> I'm just imagining. Maybe he said to not shake it. I don't know. Either <laughs> what, or. What? He said to do one of them. <laughs> I'm just imagining somebody takes the Polaroid photo and they shake it and they're like, ah, perfect. And now everybody in the photo is just like stretched out. Like <laughs> <laughs> the best I ever saw. See, you've had, a, you've had a few sessions that I've seen on the Instagram. Let me pull it up real fast. Like the gold edition and stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. Is your first one on the Oh, my account, gosh. I believe. That was like... Woo. So... Was that your first ever? That or? was like, yeah, my first ever collaborative thing. So, uh, I think it's called like the Columbus Society or something that works with... That helps models and photographers and other brands to come together and make and like kind of promote each other Mm -hmm. um so you you pay like a fee to just participate and there are all these models for you just to shoot with and they have all these themes and props and the thing is i thought that i would just need my camera (laughs) But everyone else bought their, like, lights. They're, like, it was just, like, so much. And I was just there with, like, my, you know, just my handheld camera. Mm -hmm. And there was this girl who was, I think she was kind of coordinating all of this. Um, And she was, like, oh, like, it's fine. And I'm, like, I was freaking out. And I'm, like, I don't belong here. (laughs) And then she was, like, no, it's fine. Like, I've, like, I've taught photography or something. And she had this extra equipment. Because, like, on the website, I swear it said, like, you don't need any equipment. But, like, everyone else did. Um, You don't even need a camera. Just look at people. (laughs) (laughs) Mental snapshot. Yes. So she helped me a lot and kind of taught. And that was when I had no idea on manual either. Yeah. And she was like, oh my gosh, like, you need to learn manual right now. And kind of like sassy. <laughs> and I'm like, I know. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I'm really, and that was kind of my first flash studio soft light mm-hmm. um, experiment, experience as well. So 
I mean, they uh, turned out pretty well for it having yeah. been kind of a freak I mean, out session. Honestly, yeah. so. she kind of adjusted all the settings, and then okay. I was the one that took the uh, shot, but okay. whatever. <laughs> I mean, I kind of told the model what I wanted them to do, so I guess it was a collaborative effort. Um, cool. Yeah. And uh, did a lot of editing go into those, or was that mostly just what came out of it? I want to see what came photo. out of it. And I was so surprised because before I would have to do a lot of editing yeah. and um, put in artificial light and stuff like that. So I was really impressed on how they're. Yeah. They, you don't really need editing. It's really cool when you can get those shots. That's just like the lighting and the props that are used just like fit really well together. Mm-hmm. So where it's like you throw it in to to like edit it a little bit, and but like everything you do just kind of makes it look not as good as it was yeah, before so yeah. i think i just it kind of i don't know it's it's cool mm-hmm. um trying to find some good shots to talk about here okay so you have a series called illusions as well yes and, uh, that's whoa <laughs> <laughs> so that okay that was what i think it was yeah my when i went to la with my family and it, we went to an art museum there, and it was this room that was lit up by, like, blue tiles, and it was really cool. And we shot it on, like, on the iPhone, I'm pretty sure. And I was like, stand there, like, that's so cool. And I always had the picture, but I never managed to post it so I really wanted to edit it and do something cool out of it and that was when I went to YouTube (laughs) and I saw this like really cool guy doing like like he called it like infinity or something Mm -hmm. that like went on and on and on and it was so easy I was like oh I could have like figured this out but all you do (laughs) is just like have this photo and then make another photo that's like a little bit smaller and just overlay it on each yeah. other and like it kind Double of exposure. makes that yeah, yeah. kind of makes that illusion and i was like oh yeah that's so cool and that's when i started to do all these other illusions where um it's mainly on photoshop and there's this one that i uh because like i have a website and i for each photo or photo shoot i pick out all the good ones that I really like and upload it on there. But I have like this theme that I have on Instagram where I do like three photos for each person that I do. And like, because there's so many other good shots that I really want to upload, that's when I do these illusions and kind of mess around with what I can do with them. And um, so there was this one that I just cut out pieces of like, the, the flowers yeah, were coming right, out. Right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. Those are cool. Things like that. And and then, like, a month after, I saw Shawn Mendes' uh, album, and it was literally that. And I was like, oh, I guess. He it's... copied you. So yeah, he, he, he copied has, me. He has to pay you royalties. He now is in debt to you. <laughs> so now he has to pay you in exposure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spit 900 Fahrenheit. It's apparent that you were derelict, disparaging. Grow a pair. Be a man, son, Marilyn. Um, so I've noticed in the hallway this image here of oh, uh, Phoebe, Phoebe here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is up in the hallway mm-hmm. at the school. Yeah, and I was you, honestly so, surprised at that one. Yeah, because... so can you tell a little bit? So this was the Upper Arlington High School photo competition. Mm-hmm. Um, and did was I know some people got multiple in, I think. Is this the one that yeah. you, did you get more in, or is it just So this? I got this one, and then I got one of Nick Mullins. Okay. And the, is she, um, this is a photo of Phoebe in a, is that a, what is that, that she's... A washing machine. Is that a wash? I, th- I was going to yes. say, is that a washing machine? <laughs> um. So that was also, like, one of the last photos that we took together. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm telling you, like, all the last minute ones that, like, <laughs> right, everyone yeah. loves. Here, claim but, this washing machine. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> but, um... So, 
like go going into a like a public washing machine place. Laundromat. Yes, yeah. that's what that's called. <laughs> a laundromat. Um, it's really trendy, and I was like, oh, let's like do that. And <laughs> <laughs> um, and Phoebe wanted to do a shoot with me for like the longest time, and I was just so busy with like other stuff and other people, mm -hmm. and we finally got to it, and um. I think her brother was there too, and it, it was kind of weird because he was just like standing there. I don't know, <laughs> but he was there um, for moral support. He was just, right, he was right, just chilling right. out, you know. Right. So, um, she had like a few outfits that she brought, and um, so it was like the kind of cliche shots that we did, and then towards the end, again, I did. I tried to like. Uh, invoke some storytelling and stuff mm -hmm. so I was like get in there and act like you're putting in a coin you know and like you're kind of washing yourself away I don't know something like that <laughs> whatever you want yeah like whatever you want to interpret it to be <laughs> anyway so um yeah that's the can you talk a little bit of, more about the the Upper Arlington photo competition. So you got you got the image framed and it's mm -hmm. put up in the wall for everybody to see. Is yeah. there like more to it? Like I heard there was like some kind of reception or something. Oh for yeah, that. there's a like a ceremony. It was a small ceremony. So there's also this thing called National Art Society, mm -hmm. and um, that's where if you I think two, was it two and a half credits of art yeah, and you yeah. get like it on your diploma. Yeah. So the photo contest ceremony is right before mm -hmm. the ceremony for that. And um, I got invited, and I think I got like a gift card to Ooh. like a photo store. I don't know which one, but Mr. Witt was just like, yeah, "You got." I don't think it's that. That's like the only photo store I can think of in town because I think, <laughs> as, far, as far as I'm concerned, I'm like that place and maybe one other place are the only place in Columbus that can develop film photography, like film. Yeah, I don't can we know. get a shout out to Cord Camera? Can we, <laughs> can we bring that back, please? But uh, yeah, so there's a ceremony and. I don't really know what's going to happen there. But. Yeah, because my friend Sam Wagner also got excited. Mm -hmm. It's a photo of me. It's like, right. I think it's like <gasps> two. Like, oh, and then like the flower. Yeah, where I'm just oh. going like, I'm just like posing. I thought that was your photo. No. Oh. Well, it was, I thought it was like a selfie. Yeah, so we use, uh, he wanted to do the photo shoot and he just, he didn't have a DSLR yet. He, so I let him borrow mine. I was like, here's some mm -hmm. things that you can do with it. Yeah. Do what you think looks good. So he was like, all right, sit here, pose like this. We'll have the flower sit here. And I think mm -hmm. we shot it with a low key filter on, and then he took it into Photoshop and did some editing. And that's what we have oh, up there. That's awesome. Yeah. You can I see saw it's, you a, it's a like... ping pong table. That oh, <laughs> oh, that we, I thought it was, oh, like, was that where it was? Yeah, it, was in Jake's basement. it was in Jake's basement because he had a <laughs> ping pong table down there. And we was just like, all right, well, we'll take this kitchen chair, put it down there. Why we didn't shoot it in the kitchen, I'm not quite sure. Because <laughs> uh, I feel... Um, did Mouse get a writing credit? No, he did not. <laughs> but uh, we... Yeah, so we just shot it and I submitted... Some things, unfortunately, they didn't get in, so I was mm. kind of bummed about that. But I was like, you know, it's it's whatever. But I was yeah. I was happy for Sam that he got his shot in. Yeah, yeah. So that got first place, and then there's this other shot where it was with Nick Mullins, and um, he is said, it on your account? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's like honestly one of my favorite shoots, or like not shoot, but like shots, mm -hmm. because it's just the lighting and everything that's hitting him. I don't know. It just looks like really good, and um, oh, cool. And yeah. we actually so the story of that. Um, he wanted to do a shoot. It was during the summer, and um, we got up at like five in the morning, and he picked me up because we wanted to shoot during the sunrise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, it was like too dark again for my like lens to capture light, so. It just so it was so useless, mm -hmm. and that was one of the last shots that I took of him because the, the sun was finally out and you could actually see stuff. Um, but yeah, so we got up super early, and uh, I was like, "Okay, like you're gonna be shirtless now." And then he's gonna, <laughs> he was like, "What?" And um, it was kind of awkward, but we made it work. And plus, we were like friends, so like. He like knew that, um, like I would make him do something crazy. <laughs> Put so. your foot in your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, so get in the washing machine. <laughs>
And like because the 50 millimeter is kind of like a closer angle, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, I wasn't like tall enough to get that overhead shot. So I use like the um, viewfinder to just like look at it. Okay. Yeah. Does, does your camera have a flip out screen mm -hmm. that you can yeah. yeah, so that helped a lot. Yeah. I don't know how a lot of people, I mean, like, I don't understand why companies are still making cameras that have, that don't yeah. have a flip out screen. Um, yeah. Cause it's just kind of like, all right, I guess I'll just attach an external monitor mm -hmm. to it so that I can do it. But yeah, it's, it's just having that flip out screen is so, can, it just, for like either you're doing a high angle or low angle shot, cause yeah. you can just, mm -hmm. makes it so much easier. Yeah. That's a good point to wrap up. Do you to wrap up? Yeah. Thank you, Susan, yeah, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's awesome. Oh, and uh, I didn't mention at the beginning, but uh, we just got permission actually during the episode. We're going to be using the Emperor Chaz's music for uh, transition music today. So check them out. They're on Spotify. But uh, Susan, where can people find you? Where, where's your stuff? Images by Susan on Instagram. Okay. If you want to check out more, then I have a website also. Is which it the, also Images by Susan? Which is like Images by Susan. And then if you go on Instagram, then if you want to see more, then like on the bio, I have the website there. Okay. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, Do you have any shout outs that you want to give to anybody? Um, shout outs to um, anyone and everyone that supports me in school and like my family and who deals with my crazy ideas <laughs> <laughs> that I want them to know. So. Shout out to anybody who gets in a washing machine. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you to Emperor Chaz for supplying the music. Thank you to the Green Room for sponsoring the Gab Street podcast. And I think that's it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. See you next week. See ya.